Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where people seem to think that they can do no wrong and that they're more deserving than others. And in today's episode, OP tells a tale about his crazy aunt who calls the cops when OP won't let her live with him. Guys, I hope you enjoy today's stories. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And as always, you can send or link your stories to this email right here. Let's dive in. So until recently, I worked a job where I was allowed to keep a tip jar on the counter. I was very good at this job. I was very friendly and established a great rapport with my customers. So this tip jar was usually very full of ones, fives, and coins. One morning, I'm messing around, cleaning and chatting to the regulars, and in comes a very well-dressed and rich-looking family. They approach the counter, and the little boy who's with them loudly exclaims, I want chocolate milk and cookies while grabbing at the selection of baked goods. His mother ignores him, but this is foreshadowing. She currently places an order for some things that we don't carry, and I regretly inform her of this. I then tell her about a great breakfast place around the corner that does. The woman then asks for directions, and I'm in the process of giving them when I hear her kid exclaim, Money! And I see a little hand go inside my tip jar. Now, this has happened before with little kids. I understand that they're still firming up their grip of what ownership is, and they don't mean anything by it. But I do work hard for my money, and I need it badly. Of course, it's not really a big deal to have a grabber. It's just an embarrassing interaction for everyone involved. So without breaking my speech, I just slide the tip jar back so the kid can't reach it. I figured that would make the problem vanish, but boy was I wrong. As soon as the woman sees me pulling back the tip jar, she screams, Oh, he's just playing. He wouldn't take your money. What would my son want with a few dollars anyways? At that I say, Oh, I know, it's just a gut reaction when someone's reaching into the tip jar. Karen says, Yeah, a rude one. My son is not a thief. Are you assuming that my son, my six-year-old son, is a thief? I can't believe you do that. I say to her, I'm sure he isn't, ma'am. I've just had young children snag money from there before, so... I then look down at her, and her son is still reaching for the jar. That's now out of reach, and this pissed her off more. Karen screams, he's just playing, so let him play. He's interested because you're making such a big deal out of this. If you had just left it there and shut up, he wouldn't care. Now at this point, I did get a little flustered, and I did say some generic customer service things, which she wasn't having at all. At this point, I remembered she wasn't buying anything from me, so I wished her a nice afternoon. I do consider myself an assertive person, but at that point, I was red-faced and shaking by the time it was over. On their way out the door, I hear Karen exclaim, Where the hell did you get that? And I hear her son respond, The jar, mommy. She then proceeds to pull $2 worth of quarters out of his hand. To her credit though, she did come up to the counter and return it, but she also told me that he was only playing one last time and not to assume that her son was some sort of robber. Now this is a rambling story, and you're probably thinking, seriously, all that rage for two dollars? But this obviously very affluent woman, thinking it was her child's right to play with my money when I'm a paycheck to paycheck broke student, really set me off. Yeah, I gotta agree with OP there. Like, whether it's two dollars or a few cents, technically that is considered stealing. And shame on Karen. Instead of treating this as a teaching moment, she decides to berate OP and defend her son, saying he's not a thief, he's not stealing. And I love the fact that she was still arguing that her boy wasn't stealing and that he was playing when she caught him with money in his hand, guys. Like, at that point, OP should have reached into her purse, started rummaging around, grabbing things, and saying, Oh, ma'am, let me take this. I'm just playing. Okay, so my mom watches a neighbor's baby for free because the parents can't afford daycare. My mom's retired, and she lives 10 hours away from her closest grandkids, so she's happy to do this. In addition to the baby, this couple also has a 13 and a 7 year old. This year, they tell my mom that they can't afford Christmas gifts for their kids, and asks my mom if she can buy them gifts. Hearing that, I did feel bad for them when my mom told me, so I bought each kid a nice gift. Like, $60 in total. And my mom got them a couple of gifts as well. My sister and I were both home for Christmas and made them a big plate of cookies and candy too. And this is where it takes a turn. So my family gets a call saying that they can't come and get the gifts and that they need to be dropped off. Oh, and can we wrap them because they don't have time? Now, it was like 10 o'clock at this point, so I told my mom no. 
One of them can for sure come and get the gifts because we're not going out in a snowstorm at night on Christmas Eve. That's when the woman calls again, yelling at my mom and asking where the heck we were. My mom told her that she wanted to spend Christmas Eve with her children and grandchildren and asked her to come pick up the gifts. At that, the woman hangs up, drives over, and honks the horn multiple times. She then calls my mom on the phone and tells her to run out the gifts. The woman wouldn't even leave her car to come inside the house. We run out the bags to her and the cookies, and she just leaves without a thank you or anything. And here comes the kicker that puts these people in the Hall of Fame. So the day after Christmas, my sister runs over to us laughing, and she shows me the woman's latest Facebook post. It was like a tree with a hundred gifts under it. And she posted a picture of the cookies, candies, and the Chex Mix that my sister and I made, with the caption saying, I've been a busy elf this year. I hope Santa is good to me. Some people. Yeah guys, I can't believe this. It's time to tell that Karen to find a new babysitter. Like, OP and his family are way too nice, and if I were in their shoes, and she pulled up at my house and started honking and demanding I bring out the gifts that I bought with my money, yeah, I'm gonna be locking my doors, turning off all my lights, and ignoring every single phone call from her after that. Like, the nerve of some people. And this person comments, whenever my child outgrows something, I try to give it to another family that needs it, especially around the holidays. I usually clean the item up and post it with pickup only, and a generalized area of where I live. Usually with everything I post, I get at least one person messaging me a sob story about how they don't have a car and they ask me to deliver it. I don't deliver because I'm already trying to do nice things by giving away stuff that I could easily sell. I've given away high chairs, bouncers, ride on cars, and once an entire kid's outdoor play castle with a slide. I had this one woman ask me to deliver it, and then she got mad at me because I refused to put the castle on hold for her, because she was going to ask around to see if someone she knew could come get it. She then demanded to know if I had any other things I could give her for free because I wasted her time. So right now, I'm trying to give away overnight pull-up diapers. It's a half pack, sealed, and it's free. It says what area I'm close to, so people can decide if it's too far to drive to get it before they message me. So I got this one Karen messaging me, asking where I live. So I give her the area, and she said, Oh, it's way too far. I don't have a car, but I really want this. Can you drop it off? I live in a town that's 45 minutes away. I told her I wasn't planning on driving to that town anytime soon, and then I asked for gas money. And she replies, I thought they were free. It would be cheaper for me to just go buy diapers. I don't have a car, so I was hoping you'd bring them to me. It's always the kid stuff I give away for free, and I'm tired of being treated like I'm an a-hole for not wanting to drive all over the place to deliver stuff for free. I'm trying to be nice, but I'm not an effing charity. So I just want to say that if you're giving away things for free, you don't owe people any more of a response other than, no, I can't deliver it, or yes, you may come and get it. It's as simple as that. And someone also suggested saying, I don't have a car either, as an excuse. Alright, so I'll start this off by saying that I'm a 32-year-old female. And I've been with my husband Bob, who's 39 years old, for 3 years, married for 1 year. His mom has a habit of keeping me out of most of their functions, with the excuse of, you work too much. Now that's not true, because sometimes I do make myself available, yet I find myself excluded. Last week, his mom invites us for a celebratory dinner at the restaurant after she completed her recovery. I had to work that day, but I let her and everyone know that I would be there at about 8pm. Bob obviously knew I was coming. So the thing is, when I arrived to the restaurant, I saw that the table was full. All the chairs had been taken, so I just stood there with complete puzzlement, with Bob and his mom just staring at me. His mom then told me that there was no place left for me, and that I could either have Bob get up and take his seats, or I could go home. At that, I was upset, but instead of going home, I just went and took an entire table for myself. When I did that, Bob and his mom watched, with their eyes popping out of their heads, like they saw something so shocking. Now I'm not gonna lie, it did get weird looks from the guests, but so did Bob and his mom. It was awkward in all honesty. I just sat there, had my dinner, dessert, and then went home. I saw my husband and his mom staring grudgingly while I was making my way out. My husband gets home an hour later, and he starts yelling at me saying that I embarrassed his mom in front of her guests. At that I yelled back asking what the F was I supposed to do after I got denied a seat. And he told me that it wasn't his, nor his mom's fault, that guests arrived before me and they took all of the chairs. 
I then told him that he could have saved me a chair, and he said that I should have just left and reminded me that I was a guest and that I shouldn't expect my level of entitlement to be accepted. He then goes on and says that I ruined the entire dinner for him and his mom with what I did, and he's been pouting about it for days now. Now, I don't get it. I really don't. Was my expectation really that entitled? Clearly, I'm missing something here. <laughs> Oh boy, listen guys, I like I know everyone's always quick to say, kick that person to the curb, get a divorce, etc, etc, but man, letting your wife sit at a table and eat alone while you sit with your mom and her friends is freaking ice cold, man. Like guys, I, I, I'm baffled. And then he has the nerve to come home and has the audacity to say, hey, you made dinner really awkward for everybody, you ruined it. My goodness, like save your wife a chair, you knew she was coming. And to answer Ovi's question of am I missing something here, yes, you most definitely are missing something. You're missing the respect that you deserve. Like, I find it so hard to even imagine that nobody at that table was like, oh, let's just pull up another chair. Like, who the heck were these monsters sitting at this table? But you guys know the drill. Put yourself in OP shoes. How are you dealing with this? So, without getting too political, we recently had an election in the USA. My aunt supported one side, while her husband and adult offspring supported the other side. The election did not go the way my aunt wanted it to. So with that, my aunt proceeded to flip her lid, breaking things, yelling, and even going as far as to set her daughter's I voted sticker on fire. Her husband of course called the cops. The cops declined to arrest her for anything, but suggested that she find a different place to stay for the night. This happened yesterday in New Jersey. So fast forward to 2am today. Here I am, sleeping peacefully in my home with my family over 500 miles from all that drama. That's when my fence alarm goes off, waking me up. At that point, I didn't know if it was a bear or a trespasser, so I get my pants on and grab my shotgun just to be safe. It turns out that my aunt cut the lock off my front gate because she couldn't get in and I wasn't answering my phone. But my big question is, why did she have bolt cutters in her car? So I safely stow away my weapon and ask her what the F. At that, she starts crying, screaming about how the devil took her family and threw her out, etc, etc. And she says that since she has nowhere else to go, that I need to let her into my house, so she can stay in my guest room for a while. I told her that one of my guildies is using that room right now, and that the room is occupied. That this person came from Texas all the way to West Virginia to hang out with me. That I'm not gonna toss them out with 30 seconds of notice because my aunt shows up. So with that, she decides to call police. She tells them that I'm keeping her from entering her home. We're out in the woods, so the cops don't get here quick. At 4.41am, the cops show up. I see them talking to her in my driveway, and she shows them the bolt cutters and the ruined lock. A few minutes later, the officer knocks on my door and says, Hey, your tenant claims that... With that, I immediately cut him off and tell him that I do not have a tenant that I own and occupy the structure. I then offer to show him the deed. The officer goes on and says, well, this woman claims, and that's when I cut him off again and says, what's the address on her ID say? At this point, the cops pissed at me, I can tell, so I try to de-escalate the situation. I tell him, look man, she doesn't live here, she's never lived here, that's just my aunt, she lives in New Jersey, please check her ID card. The cop calms down a bit and lets me know that he'll talk to her and then come back. Ten minutes later, the cops come back to my door. Three of them this time, not just the one from earlier. One of the guys had stripes and a rocker on his arm, so I could tell he was important. He then asks me if there's any way my aunt could stay here for the night because she's too drunk to drive, so he can't let her back on the road. Now, this woman just drove from New Jersey to West Virginia drunk. Thank goodness she didn't kill anyone. I told them that she can't stay here, but I'm sure there's room in the local jail. The cop then asked if she can just sleep in her car in my driveway and to leave in the morning. I told him absolutely not, because when she wakes up in the morning, I'll just have to call them again to come get her off my property, so that would solve nothing. I then asked them to remove her from my property. So long story short, she got her car towed and she's in the drunk tank for the night. 
So much for sleeping tonight. My kids need to be up for school soon. Guys, I love that OP was so savage. Uh, there's no room for you in my house, but there is room in the jail. And guys, is it just me, or did the cops not really want to arrest her or remove her from the property? I wonder if it's because they were family, and they just want to see family members resolve things between themselves before escalating it to arrest. Because I'm certain it would have been a different story if a random person was doing all this, right? So I can't sleep because my next door neighbor is yelling at his folks. We'll just call him Yeller. They moved into his house temporarily because a tree fell on their house. And Yeller's helping them pay for it and we didn't hear any trouble with them for the first two weeks they've been in the neighborhood. Apparently though, his mom and dad are the type of people that thinks that buying too many expensive things will make you snobbish. From what I can hear with the loud screaming with the open windows is that they've been selling off some of his stuff. Games and game consoles, watches, and even expensive clothing, I believe. Apparently, they were putting that money towards groceries, so it sounds like they're not keeping the money for themselves. They did this yesterday and today. I also found out that the day Yeller was planning to go to dinner with his girlfriend and planned on proposing to her, that the ring box was empty. Apparently, the parents took it, and they pawned it for gas money and cleaning supplies and other things, and I don't think his parents are staying there much longer. I even heard them pulling out the your stuff is our stuff card and calling him spoiled and entitled. I'm hearing him yell at them to get out of his house. And honestly, in what reality is it okay to sell off your house stuff? Kid or not, that's rotten. I found out that he called the cops on his folks and he's gonna make them sweat a bit until they agree to get his stuff back or he will press charges. Oh, and with his girlfriend, she did say yes by the way. Yeah, that's a great way to never see your kids again. <laughs> Move into their house and start selling off things you think are unnecessary. Great idea, mom and dad. If I were in Opie's shoes, I'd like to say that I'd love to have my parents arrested to teach them a lesson, especially if they're pawning off stuff like engagement rings or stuff that's worth a lot of money, but I really don't know, guys, so let me know what you would do. How many of you would not hesitate to throw your parents in the slammer? I'm a tattoo artist in a private salon suite, and a hairstylist, Karen from down the hall, asked me to cover up her c-section, lap band, and skin removal surgery scars. I told her I could, and it would take more than one session because what she wanted was so large. I gave her a smoking deal, and she agreed. Before we started, she signed my consent and we reviewed aftercare instructions. Little did I know, she was the worst client imaginable. The woman was late to every appointment, up to 50 minutes late. She would often leave during sessions to get snacks from the gas station, and on two occasions, she asked me to leave my own studio so she could talk on her phone privately. On top of that, she was so sensitive that I can only get about one and a half hours of tattooing in at a time. She was so uncooperative and wasted so much time that I ended up seeing her for six sessions total. There was one small area that wasn't finished, because she was so sensitive that she always asked me to move to something else. However, she was so happy with the work that was done that she posted videos of it to TikTok when she was on vacation in June. Near the end of June, I went on a mission trip with my high school youth group students, and the day after I arrived home on July 3rd, she asked me how soon I could schedule her. I told her I wasn't available again until after school started, which was August 1st, but that I would reach out when time got closer. A week later, she texted me to say how dare I have other clients in my studio when I told her I wasn't available to see her until August, and that she wanted half her money back to get another tattoo artist to finish it. I gave her the reason why I was unavailable, and I told her I wasn't giving her any refund, and I said that I was tired of her taking advantage of me. She replied with a lot of senseless garbage, the last which was, everyone who messes with me gets the short end of the stick. And don't worry, you'll see me again, and God sees you. So nine days later, even before August 1st came around, she filed a civil claim against me, seeking nine times what she paid for the tattoo. I filed my response along with the evidence to support it. I appeared in court on Monday, and the judge immediately sent us to mediation before hearing the case. The mediator informed me that she had filed an amendment, and now she's asking for $2,000 more than the original claim allegedly for even more pain and suffering. He asked her to present her case so he could help us try to work out a settlement. She rambled on and on, lied throughout, and complained about how humiliating it was for her to have to show pictures of her half-naked body in court. 
He then asked me what my response was, and I stated, she's filed this claim against me because I didn't schedule another appointment for her as quickly as she wanted me to. I never refused to see her again. I refused to give her a refund because she signed a contract that says that she understands that she's not entitled to any refunds whatsoever. And then I showed him the signed contract. He then excused me from the room and they talked for about 20 minutes before he grabbed me in to talk in another room. He told me, so she's willing to accept half of what she's asking for. And if you agree, we won't have to go back to the courtroom. I then asked him what the challenges to my defense were, and he mumbled some nonsense that made it seem evident that he just wanted me to cave so he could move on. He didn't allow me any time at all to tell him the details of my side of things. I told the mediator that I wasn't settling for anything, and he instructed me to go back to the courtroom. I then returned to the courtroom, and the judge asked me if we had worked everything out. And I said, no, sir. He then chuckled and said he would help. I waited for another 10 minutes and the judge sent someone to go retrieve the mediator and the claimant so he could start the hearing. A couple of minutes later, the mediator came in alone and he shoved a piece of paper in my face and said that she has dismissed the claim. He told me I was free to go. Thank goodness OP didn't have to pay a single dime to that entitled Karen. Like imagine being that freaking entitled guys, that you take someone to court because you're upset that you're not getting something done when you want it. But hey guys, if you've been here long enough, nothing surprises you anymore, right? And that my friends brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy, crazy Karen stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. It's another r slash entitled people where OP's dad completely completely thinks he owns OP's life and steals money from them for over 15 years. It's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.